Hello everybody, my name is Sarah and the name of this segment is First World Problems. Today I began my day like pretty much every other, wishing YouTube a good morning and starting a vlog with some pretty typical stuff. Did a little bit of mail time, did a little bit of a strength workout, shared that with glass, and uh, got ready for my day. Uh, about halfway through the day I dumped my memory card onto my computer uploading some of my files so that I could kind of maintain some semblance of a workflow for later in the day so that I could save myself some time when I got home from work when I do all the editing of my vlog. When I arrived home all my files from this morning had been deleted somehow incidentally I don't know if something was struck accidentally by one of these little animals that reside in my house or if I had done it incidentally before leaving. And I've downloaded about 12 different recovery softwares to try to find these damn video files and they are nowhere to be seen. They are completely gone. Um, I don't know what to say about it other than all of my videos for the first part of the day are pretty much lost. I'm glad it was nothing important. I'm usually pretty good about backing up files, but in this particular case, I hadn't even gotten to that stage yet. It was just more of a, a card dump halfway through the day to save myself some time later. Now it's just cost me a shit ton of time in finding some kind of recovery software, none of which are finding any semblance of any of these files. I'm not really sure why, but maybe it just wasn't meant to be. So at any rate, this vlog is going to be extremely short. I'm going to show you what I got in the mail today and I'm going to cut to the second half of my day which is just me ranting in the car and driving to work and I'm going to apologize for the poor quality of this vlog. It's going to be completely uninteresting but I feel like at this point given the streak of videos I've put up daily I want to put something up and I really just at this point in the night don't have anything more probative to say. So let me show you what I got in the mail today. Okay, so today's mail time included these, these two tires here. I got two Continental Grand Prix um, four season tires. I got these because I've been using the Gator skins for a couple of years now. Um, and while I enjoy the puncture resistance and really have had to deal with very few flats considering, considering how awful and disgusting our roads are, um, they ride like a freaking go-kart. I mean, they just, they feel awful. And I think I noticed it more getting back on the bike after being on the trainer for a few months and just feeling like I'm just being beat to shit. Like I'm gonna break my wrists before <laughs> I finish my ride type of thing. So I went with these. Um, I was kind of between these and the 4000 um, S2s. And the reason I went with these is they've got this, uh, this Vectran uh, technology basically in the sidewall which is something that it shares more or less with the gator skins that kind of help with the rougher roads um, but the nice thing about these is that surprisingly enough actually they're 330 TPI tires um, my graphene tires my Vittoria graphenes which are race tires that are super soft and supple are like 320 TPI so I'm actually very surprised it's not even really listed I don't think here on the box anywhere. I would be shouting that from the rooftop to have that kind of low rolling resistance on a tire. Um, I mean, I was expecting, I bought these not even knowing, it didn't even look. I was thinking it was gonna be, um, I think the Gator skins are like 180 TPI. I think this was gonna be a jump to maybe 220 or so, but I was not expecting it to be like a 330 TPI tire. So I'm kind of excited to put these on the bike and feel the difference. I think it's gonna be night and day. The other thing I did after waiting entirely too long to do this is I jumped up from a 23 mil to a 25 millimeter. Uh, tire so it's gonna do a lot better for long endurance rides I'll still use the Vittorias for racing and whatnot, but um, these will kind of be a good go-between uh, in terms of going from the Gator skins to the Vittoria at least I'll have some kind of a happy medium um, obviously TPI is not the uh, end-all be-all and low rolling is resistance isn't the whole story um, like I said, the, the wider 25mm uh, width is going to help a lot, but I think some of the um, the rubber compound and the graphene technology in the Vittorias, I still think it's just 
there's really gonna be no comparison. I mean, these tires are, um, I got these for under 70 bucks for the pair. So about $35 a piece I found in most areas. So it's a pretty cheap tire, all things considered. Um, the Vittorias were probably double that. Um, probably 150, 160 bucks for both. I don't remember specifically, I bought them last year. But, um, you know, th those were for race tires, those are supposed to be high performance tires, those are not my daily ride type of tires, but I'm looking for a set of uh, affordable training tires, something that, you know, I, if I replace every year or so, um, you know, I don't feel too bad about spending 35 bucks on each tire. Um, excuse me, once a year, so, you know, that's that's good there. But I'm always looking for good ideas for the bike. I stuck with Continental because it's something that I've used. The only two brands of tires I've ever really used are Continental and uh, Vittoria. I mean, I've used Giant usually puts their own brand tires on there, which are actually, they don't feel bad. They're just horribly, horribly, um, just not at all durable. They're just, the, the road life on them, you might get, you know, a summer season out of them. They're not puncture, puncture resistant and they, they wear like hell. Uh, so they're nice and soft, they make the bike feel real nice, but they ride like complete garbage. So outside of the stock tire that comes on the bike, uh, for the road bike, I've only used Continental and Vittoria, and then I've used some Schwalbe's for the, um, the cross bike but if you guys have any recommendations or if you have any tires that you've tried that you just think to stay away from like i've never really tried a michelin tire um just let me know in the comments below because i'd be interested um because you know this is this is bike stuff this is this is like porn for cyclists not really that was really weird um but you know we're always looking for ways to edge out our performance and uh i do more with recommendations of others. I spend a lot of time like going through forums and whatnot and reviews to try to figure out where the best bang for your buck is because I've said it before, this is one expensive ass sport. So let me know in the comments below. I value your feedback. And now back to your regularly scheduled blog. Who the fuck deleted my files? <laughs> Well, I'm mildly regretting not getting out for a ride. It's actually pretty mild. It's not particularly warm, but the wind is extremely quiet. So on days like this, if you bundle up, you can actually stay pretty warm. But the plan was a strength day today. And now my legs are hurting, especially on the stairs. It's a mob scene at the gas station today. So we're nearing the end of February, it's almost March, which means not long after that we'll be about a quarter of the way through the year. And I wanted to get, ask you guys a question about um, how you handle your vacations from your job. Um, for me personally, I don't really take vacations. Like last year I actually went to the Adirondacks for about a week, so I did take a, a week-long stretch. Uh, I'm more inclined to take a vacation if I have travel plans or some kind of you know away from home but I'm not really the type of person to take the staycation the issue is at my job um, vacation is part of your salary obviously and your benefits and if you don't lose or use it you lose it so we don't uh, uh, get a payout on it and we don't really get a rollover now let's that's not to say if you know business needs arise and you know you get a few weeks of vacation and then you've got like four straggling days out there that you didn't get to take they're pretty good at, uh, at letting you kind of roll those last few days into the first few months of the next year and they let you roll it over that way that way you're not penalized for you know taking care of the business type of thing but more often than not there's a, enough proliferation in the positions uh, that I have that we are able to kind of take care of uh, others while they're on vacation. So there's no real reason why you can't take a vacation at my job. 
I'm fortunate enough to work for a, an industry or an area where there really is no blackout period, so there's no um, restrictions in terms of when I can take vacation. I can take it around the holidays if I do choose to. Um, obviously, they don't want the whole facility to take all their vacations at the same time, so there might be uh, some discretionary um, denials of vacations if you have too many people, but we really haven't run into that um, where everybody just wants to take off. We have a shutdown for Christmas time, so it's not like everybody's trying to get off for Christmas week. We're off, so um, there's not a whole lot of uh, infighting for vacations, but I'm really bad at taking vacation time. I'm bad at taking time off. I don't take sick days. Um, I just don't call into work. I, I show up. I'm, I'm there to work. I have a pretty strong work ethic. Um, and I'm just there. But I have vacation time. You know, I, I'm going to have to use it. Um, which, it's not that I don't enjoy taking vacation time. It's just, I think there's uh, there's a number of studies, actually, on, on why people don't, don't take vacations. I'll link a couple articles I've found uh, in the past down below if I can uh, dredge those back up. But, you know, one of those is, is a feeling kind of a guilt of letting other people or putting other people in a position where they have to kind of carry my end and their own. Um, there's other reasons that people don't, don't take vacations. Like they feel like uh, nobody else is capable of doing their job. Um, I do my job well. Maybe people don't do the job the same way I do, but that's not to say that the place is going to stop functioning because I'm not there. I'm not that egotistic to presume that the place will just cease to function. Um, there's fear uh, in terms of if you take vacation, people will realize that the company can work without you and then you'll lose value, which is kind of a paranoia thing. It's not that it hasn't happened to people before, but there's a number of like psychological reasons and business reasons that people don't take vacation. And a lot of them actually speak to me um, on some level or another. Uh, I wish that I had kind of set myself up with like a training camp you know, this, this year, I've always wanted to do an away from home uh, cycling training camp, something with like full support, um, but it just kind of wasn't in the cards for this year, so I didn't do that, but I'm trying to think of ways that I can use my vacation time this year. I've got three weeks that I want to use up. You know, do I just take like long weekends in the summertime and maximize on cycling? Do I take a, a week off here, uh, a week off there? I don't have any real travel ambitions. That doesn't mean something might not strike me, but I'm not a huge traveler. I enjoy traveling, but um, I, I just, there's nothing right now that I'm thinking that is, I have to go do this. I have to go to this place this year. Uh, that's gonna be my vacation idea. But let me know in the comments below how you guys handle vacations. Do you guys, you know, it doesn't matter. You just need to get the hell away from your workplace and you don't care if you take a week off and spend it on the couch. Um, or do you, you plan like a, a yearly family trip or something like that? Let me know. I'm always curious as to how other people uh, use their discretionary time. What the hell is that? Who the hell paints a building pink? It's kind of gross. All right, I'm closing in on work. And as exciting as that is, it's not something I can share in the vlog. So I'm going to end it here. I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you so much, and I will catch you in the next one. Ooh, for you.